Hey everybody, yes, we're here. That's what the banner says. And today, yes, we're here in a flash. <laughs> you see what I did there? It's John Flaherty joining me uh, via Zoom. How are you doing, Flash? I'm doing good, Bob. Uh, what's going on with this background? It's the first thing that jumps out at me. Yeah, I kind of I mixed it up today. Uh, we've got a lot of kind of weird artwork going on here. I think I have a picture of my daughter when she was really young, Madison, up there. I was wondering who that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's, you'll meet. yeah that's definitely Madison, with a little, little cutesy pose mm -hmm. off to the side like that. You've got some lovely pictures behind you as well. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, can, can you see I'm taking you into my dining room, which I think you've only been at this place one time. Yes. And you know that it's all decorated in white paint. So I figured I would stay with that theme today with my background of the white paint in the dining room. Very clean and contemporary. Yes. Those. Looks like you have some lovely mahogany chairs. <laughs> I do. I do. This is, I'm very proud of my dining room table and the chairs actually, uh, my son, Brian, who's home from UVA, because obviously they're doing everything online. Yeah. Uh, this is his favorite place to do all of his work at oh, this right. table. So uh, this is kind of our gathering spot. So I'm bringing you in today. And, and just curious, how does that go for him switching to online like that? Is it kind of the same amount of work for these college students? Yeah, he actually said, Bob, that it's a lot tougher than he thought it was going to be. You know, I thought it'd be an easy transition. But the way the University of Virginia is doing it is every professor is kind of at their own discretion on how they want to do it. So there are some professors who say, hey, we're keeping an 11 o'clock lecture time. It's going to be live, <clears throat> excuse me, and you got to be there to watch it. Or other professors are saying, here's the amount of work you need to do. Right. Do it at your own pace. And I think he's got a, an exam today, actually, that he said is going to be, I mean, it, you know, it has to be open book, right? You can't trust these kids that they're, uh, so he, he's staying busy with that. My daughter's home from Northeastern. Uh, she's kind of doing the same thing and has a job up there. So that's been a, you know, a challenge for her. Yeah. <clears throat> and then Logan, my 18 year old is a senior in high school. Uh, and he's actually done really well with the transition. Again, it's a, here's all the work you have to do, figure out when you want to do it. You have to, you know, send it in at the end of the day. So they're all doing a great job. With it. Excellent. Now, speaking of transition, we've all had to make that transition to either self quarantining, social distancing, just doing the right thing, staying and yeah. doing that sort of thing. How has that been for you? We always want to remind all the people viewing this, continue to practice that, wash hands. I know you, by the way, when I saw you in Tampa, you were working that hand sanitizer. <laughs> I was wondering, it was a small carry-along yeah. bottle. So did you run out or do you still have some? So this is what you're talking about, right? That was the hand sanitizer from Tampa. Um, and to answer your question, I, I feel like uh, – I, I took this seriously right away. So when we were shooting those promos and I got back home, I actually had an event that I was supposed to MC uh, on a Thursday night, which they canceled. Had a wedding I was supposed to go to on a Friday night, which I decided not to, uh, just to be safe. So uh, we've taken it pretty seriously here. And, you know, I mentioned Logan, the 18-year-old. He's the one who had it all figured out you know you would have thought he graduated from medical school at some point because ah I got this all straightened out but to be honest with you it lasted about two days and then all of a sudden his uh, his friends his senior class uh, they all got on board pretty quickly so getting back hand sanitizer when I saw you I only had this one so I got back and I went to ShopRite and there's Ooh. an assistant general manager there named Jimmy Callahan right Jimmy. We got a lot in town Jimmy <laughs> and Jimmy came over and hooked me up with this. So uh, this, has been, uh, this has been big for us here, being able to keep our hands clean and, and obviously a lot of washing of the hands daily and trying to avoid social contact. Now, I know this about you, a way that you could bide the time, if you decided to go out, normally would be to play golf because you love to play yeah. golf. I'm curious, is your, has your club opened? Are you able to do that? Or is that kind of also a no-fly zone? Yeah, our club had done some renovations, so they weren't going to open until April 1st. So okay. we'll, we'll see if that's going to continue. Uh, I actually live right next door to a course uh, here in Rivervale uh, that our, one of our bosses, Woody Fryman, uh, plays okay. a lot. And I've seen people out there playing, and I've kind of been like, I don't know if this is something that I want to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I talked to Paul O'Neill, and Paul is in Florida somewhere, and he said he actually went out for a round of golf with a buddy of his, but they took their own golf carts and they, you know, kind of did it that way, which I thought made a lot of sense. But for me, and you know, you know, I, I love my workouts every day. So it's been, right. uh, it's been a challenge, but a, a challenge that in a weird way I've enjoyed because 
how do I get my workout done today? You know, and, and yeah. I've, I've gotten out to the streets and, and started running again, which I did a few years ago. So I'm like, okay, maybe a good time to get back into running. And then downstairs in the basement, we kind of came up with a makeshift gym with some dumbbells and uh, yeah. trying to get some work done down there because I feel like, you know, and for everybody watching, I feel mentally so much better after I do something active. Right. And, you know, we spend so much time in hotels and their gyms are so different. So I think I'm always used to, how am I going to get something done today and, right. and kind of improvising? So uh, that's been a big focus every day. I want to give our viewers a little insight into your mind and the way you work. I think you having to change it up is always a good thing, right? Because when yeah. you come in and you're in studio and you talk to me about, you know, what you did at the gym that day or whatever, like, I remember there was a point in time you probably never would have considered boxing or anything like that, but you yeah. kind of worked that into your routine. I was like, oh, okay, you know. It's, that's interesting. You, you're always kind of shaking it up a little bit. Yeah, I always uh, try to keep it interesting so that it's something that you want to keep doing, you know, that you're engaged with it. Uh, you know, years ago, I started doing some triathlons, which was uh, actually a funny time in my life. Uh, the cameras were following me the first triathlon I ever tried to do, and I did it to support a local charity uh, in Rockland County and Pearl River. And I remember thinking, you know, I've never swam in my life. And I'm like, all right, you know, swimming's not going to be a big deal. And about 50 yards into the swim, I started panicking, right? And, and you have a decision. You're in a lake, and you're like, I'm either going back to the shore or i got to find a way to get it done. And I looked over at the Yes Network camera guy, and he's watching me. And I'm like, I can't go back, right? I gotta, so I went on my back, and I started doing, like, a, a backstroke. And eventually – got done with that swim and the rest of the rest of the day was uh, relatively easy. But, you know, my personality, I got addicted and I said, you know what, yeah. I, I have to figure out a way to learn to teach myself how to swim. And I was lucky enough to do that. So that's awesome. Cool. And so you were like, why couldn't you follow me on the fourth triathlon that I did? Right? <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the weirdest thing I think for some of these players, especially the ones with family, wife or young kid, well, now they're trying to get their stuff done. But they're yeah. doing it with their family around. So first time, let's say it's a, a Brett Gardner, for example. That's the first time in, what, 14 years? He's probably had the family around that much and, and sure. had to kind of fit everything in, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, I am thinking what they're probably doing is probably st sticking to that off-season routine of trying to get your swings in, wherever that is. Uh, you know, probably some of these places have closed, so they're not going to be able to have access to it how to keep your arm in shape. And I, you know, I think back to when I was in Tampa and I didn't have somebody to play long toss with, I would take a bucket of baseballs to like a tennis court and throw from one corner to the other yeah. just to get the reps in to keep it going. But, you know, most of these guys probably don't have throwing partners. Maybe they do. Hopefully they do. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I think they're all probably saying, you know what, just let's try to do what I did during the off season so that when you get that call, uh, that we're ready to get back to work. Uh, you don't have a, a, a long way to go. You talked about preparation. We would be right now neck deep in preparation because tomorrow, tomorrow. would be opening day. Yeah. Isn't that crazy that this is where we're at? And it's, I, I'm like you, instead of lamenting it, because I love baseball, you love it all day, yeah. you fans love baseball. I'm just going to look forward to it. Yeah. I don't know when it's coming yet. But that's kind of what I'm focusing on. And when those guys start getting back to work and back to their second spring training, and getting that vibe again, that's going to be a good feeling. Yeah, and I, I think I've gotten to a point where I'm with you, where I'm just looking forward to when we can get back to doing what we love to do and, and have baseball around. But then you quickly come back to, you know, there's real life situations going on here and how lucky we are to uh, – to do what we do and to be safe right now and, and doing the things we can do to keep other people safe. Uh, but the speculation that's out there on when the season is going to come back, what it's going to look like. Right. I think we all agree. We don't know what it's going to look like, but we can't wait to get there to do what we love to do and to bring these games and the analysis and the, the shows to all the Yankee fans out there.